Today we're gonna take a very beginner looking design like this and turn it into something that looks a little bit more like this. This may seem super in depth, but it's really not that difficult if you break down a few key and basic principles that can elevate your design work. Just simple things like layering, contrast, typography, and photography. So let's dive in and look at the two designs that we have here. So I just have a Kittle project open with two artboards right here, and these are the two designs right here. This one is the beginner, the simple, one this is just a picture with two lines of text it's not very dynamic it's not very eye-catching it doesn't feel very professional and on the right we have our other artboard where you know if, if you'd guessed that I took a little bit more time on this one you'd be right I did I did take more time on this one it's a little bit more professional a little more edgy a little bit more dynamic it feels like the page is kind of coming to life. I could see this being like a magazine cover or an article cover or something like that going on. Now in this first one, I really just have two or three things. There's just a photo and then I've got two lines of text. This is just a random font that I chose knowing that it's not really going to lend to the style of what I'm going for. And knowing what you're going for is super important. So do your research, look at some look at some references to make sure that you kind of know stylistically what you're going for. Look at the fonts that are used in those things and try to use similar ones to capture a similar vibe because font usage, font choice is definitely going to lend to the vibe and feel of your creation. There are fonts like this that feel like fun and gooby and kiddish, and that's just not what I was going for. I was going for something super sporty and edgy, so that's just not hitting the mark for me. The other thing that I notice here is there's not a lot of contrast between the background and the text. The text is kind of hard to read. There's not a lot of like life giving quality to this. The picture itself is kind of plain and boring and just doesn't really glue together with the font and overall design. It doesn't feel like designy. It doesn't feel designed. It doesn't feel intentional. It doesn't feel like something, something that's been, you know, a couple ingredients have been put together and then put in the oven and this is what came out. This feels more like I found a random picture, which I did, and then found a random font that doesn't match the vibe of what I'm going for, which I did, and then put those two things together, which I did. And this is what came out. So exactly what I did came out and doesn't look super great. On the other hand, we've got this one and I will break this down for you, each individual piece, and we're gonna recreate this. So this definitely has more layers going on. It's a bit more complex, but we'll break it down and I promise it won't be that bad. So there's only really a few key elements going on here, right? So we have a picture in the background that I found from the same photos panel that I got this other picture from. So it's not an issue of sourcing the photo, it's more just choosing a dynamic photo that's going to help us achieve the style that we want to achieve. Photography and typography and design are kind of like the bread and butter. So if you choose a bad photo, then you're really just gonna spend an hour, two hours wasting your time trying to bring a design to life that didn't have any air to begin with you're gonna want to take a little bit of time on the front end finding this photo. This Finding this photo took me maybe 10 or 15 minutes, but it saved me a lot of time on the back end trying to make something interesting that was not interesting at all. The photo already can stand by itself, which is saying a lot and is very helpful to creating a design that lives and breathes. The next thing that we have going on here is the typography choice. Now I wanted something athletic and sporty, so this font right here is Skyrise Display, and it's a variable font in its weight, and then it just has a zero or a one slant, so that's basically not italic or italic. And I liked the sporty, forward, edgy nature of slanting the text. It feels very fast-paced, sporty, edgy, trendy, 
So I definitely added that italic there. And then on the bottom, we have just a clean sans serif font. This is Archivo Black. And then this one down here is just a, a lighter font weight of Archivo. So not really a ton going on there. The third element that you might see here is that there is some of the photo that's going behind the text and then some of the photo that's going in front of the text. And that is giving it this kind of 3D popping out of the page at you effect. And this can be applied in almost anything design wise. I always try to layer my elements so that it gives it that life and that 3D effect because it just makes it feel more whole, more professional, more just eye candy kind of. And now that Kittle has an eraser tool, that is super easy to achieve. The last two cool things that I have going on here is I just have a, this is just a color block with a linear gradient of, it's going from black to nothing essentially. It's just both sides of the gradient are black and then one side of them is 0% opacity and one side is the other uh, is 100% is opacity. And then I just flip that on the bottom and that just kind of gives it that cinematic feel. And then the last little fun thing, this is a group of four images where I just went into the images panel and I just typed in tennis ball and I found the one picture of a tennis ball that I knew would cleanly remove from the background with the edge. AI background remover. And then I just duplicated that four times and made each one of them smaller. And with each one that got smaller, I also turned the opacity down each time and I turned the blur up each time. So it kind of gives it this motion blur looking effect like he's about to hit this tennis ball that's coming out of the page. So with all of that being said, let's get into it and make this from scratch. So I am opening up a new artboard. What I just did for this is four by five. So I just did 2000 by 2500 pixels. Should be plenty enough to work with and not give us any issues. And the way that I started this project, like I start most projects, is I start with imagery. So I went to the images panel and I just went in here and typed in tennis. And as you could imagine, a bunch of tennis photos popped up and they all have different vibes, different color, different feelings, different moods, different time of day, different quality. And it really just took a minute to find that photo. But just for you, I'm gonna go back through and find this photo. So probably if our video editor does this, here's a small time lapse of me finding this photo. Here it is, got it, boom. Did that just for you guys. And so I'm just bringing this into my canvas and sizing it up to where I want to work with it. I might, because you can also do this as well, you can copy and paste artboards into different projects. I'm gonna copy and paste my reference that I created just before this into here, just so I can see kind of where I'm sizing things. So it looks like I've got his elbow just above there. And that looks just about the same to me. So I'll do that right there. Cool. The second thing that I did was I did my headline. So I'm just going to hit T. And the font that I used for this, I just went to the sans serif category. And then I scrolled until I found something that felt like it had a lot of energy. Once I found it, I was like, duh, I should have just typed in that font so I can type that in here. Sky rise display. I didn't actually originally know that this had an italic, but if you turn the variable slant from zero to one, it'll give you that italic. Size this text up. And then we're just gonna type in tennis and place that in the center. Excellent. And I might need to adjust where my photo is a little bit. Awesome. Now, the next thing that I did was I put my subtitle and then my accent text down here. Uh, this is just a random text box line, line of text that I got from ChatGPT. I just told it to 
give me to a, a sentence or two about a tennis magazine or something, something random, which is extremely helpful if you're making templates or you're wanting to make designs to come back and use later. If you don't know what to say for these text boxes, you can use something like ChatGPT to generate a couple sentences or three sentences, whatever you need to fill the space. But we also have our new Kittle AI Copilot coming out soon that will also be able to generate text for you just like ChatGBT within the editor. So that will be super helpful. So this line of text is just Archivo Black and spaced out. So I'm just gonna grab that and pull that over here and make sure that's centered up. And then I just copied and pasted that down here, closed the line spacing or the letter spacing and made it light. And I think it's just, regular sentence case. And I'm going to copy and paste that text over here. What's the font size? Looks like about 30. You can size that font down. And then I'm just going to adjust my text box so that it feels nice and tidy. Don't want that text stringing everywhere. Cool. The next thing that I did, I knew I wanted to have part of this photo where the tennis player's arm is kind of like coming up over the title. So the way that we're going to do that is I'm going to click on my image and then up here in my toolbar, I'm going to click on this little duplicate button and that has duplicated our image. It's always going to send it to the front. So no issues there. And I already have it selected. So I'm going to click the AI background remover. Now, obviously the background remover wasn't perfect here, but it did a great job getting his arm right here. And then all I need to do is clean it up a little bit. So the AI background remover definitely did get his arm, but it did get part of the tennis racket as well. No issues. I can just select my image here hit the eraser tool, and then get rid of those parts of the image that I don't need. Looks like this part of his finger is kind of wackadoodle, so I'm gonna just erase that, and the rest of his finger could just be going behind the text. Let's do that here too. Clean that up like it never happened. So that looks a lot better to me. I might adjust my picture just a little bit so that that part of his palm doesn't get obstructed by the background and the letters. And then I can just clean this up a little bit more. Done. And then I can move my background picture to match. Boom. Just a little bit of care and love and it's already looking better. So I'm going to click my text lines here and bring this to the front. And I need to bring this to the front as well. Now, the next thing I did was went to the images panel and I just typed in tennis ball and I'm pretty sure I used this one. So we're just going to take this photo, AI background remover. Boom. Awesome. Just to make it a little bit easier on myself, I'm going to take my crop tool and just crop this down roughly to where it's the size of just the tennis ball. Now I can scale that up and I'm just going to put a little bit of a blur on this something like that. And I'm going to build this composition in parts and then put it together just so I'm not clicking on the different tennis balls and it's like falling on top of itself and I can't select the right things. So I'm just going to size this up, bring this over, size this down just a hair, put a little bit more blur on it, and then turn the opacity down to like, let's say like 75%, maybe a little more 85. And then I'm going to copy and paste this again, make it a little bit smaller. Same deal up the blur down to like 70%. And then once more, I take that again. These not, might not be ex the exact same sizes as the previous, but it's the same concept and you can play around with it. Up the blur once more and get that opacity down. So I need to make sure that this is in front of that one. Maybe make this a little bigger so it's not such of a difference in size. Same with that. Get this one in front and then get this one in front. And I want it to have a little bit of a curve. So I could select this guy up here and then give it that curve. Now what I can do is select all four of these, hit G and group them 
and now I can size it up and rotate it how I want. And it looks like it landed somewhere around here. And I'm just going to send this back a couple layers until it is behind our headline. Awesome. So now one thing you may notice is that this kind of hurts the legibility of our title a little bit. And so what I did to solve that was I just clicked on my title, went to text shading, stayed on this first shading layer, and then turned my offset off, made sure the color was black, up to the blur to about right there. And then I just turned the opacity down because it didn't need to be quite as harsh. I might up the blur a little bit more just so I don't see that fine line and something like that allows us to have that uh, tennis ball composition behind the title, but still make the text legible and not have to sacrifice anything. I'm not one for trying to use drop shadows like right off the bat. If I can manipulate the color of the type and maybe the color of the photo to allow me to not have to use drop shadow, I'm gonna try to do that first. But if it's not working, I'll definitely allow myself to use that drop shadow just a little bit, just make sure that it's done tastefully and doesn't look like those weird late 90s, early 2000s web graphics where it's like a bad clip art of a computer with a really, really harsh drop shadow. Pretty sure you know what I'm talking about. Awesome, we are almost done. Now I'm going to grab a just a basic shape, a square from my shapes category. Bring this up to, I don't know, probably about right here. We can adjust it later. And I'm going to go to linear gradient. Both of these are black and I'm just going to take the second one and move it down to 0%. Looks like I need to flip this around. Awesome. And then we just need to send this back until it is behind our title and our tennis player guy. So it looks like it hit that and now it is behind. Maybe I want it to be behind that composition as well. Yeah, so now it's giving us this dynamic of, you know, foreground and background and, and really making things a lot more 3D. Now, same thing with legibility down here. I really do not want to add a drop shadow to this text to make it more legible, but I really do not want to add a drop shadow to this text to make it more legible. I think that would look not super professional. So what I did was just copied and pasted this shape, turn it around at the bottom, and then just sent it a few layers back until it was behind my text. And if I feel like it's touching a little bit too much of my tennis guy, I can pull that back just to make sure that the color on him is still good. Last thing that I love doing, I always do this last, is adding just a little bit of texture. So I'm gonna select my artboard here, go to textures, and I'm pretty sure I used a photocopy texture and it looks like this second one right here. That's real, real harsh. I'm not gonna use that blending mode. So I'm going to go to something like overlay and then just turn down that intensity probably to like 50 percent so i did this with the the first time that i did this as well i added the texture and then i was like wait what's this little thing on his wrist so i just zoomed in grabbed my eraser tool and just erase that part that it seemed like the background remover didn't get zoom back out and there we go well, that is all for today's video. Drop a comment down below if you like the second version better than the first one. Drop a comment down below if you like the first one better. If you think it's a little kitschy, a little fun, and that's your vibe, let us know. I truly hope that this video was helpful for you. Maybe there was a little nugget of knowledge in there, maybe something that you haven't tried yet, something that can level up your graphics and help you in your designing journey. If you haven't already, please do me a huge favor and hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any Kittle tips, tricks, uh, trends, styles, any Kittle updates. You will be notified first if you are subscribed to the channel. Thank you guys again so much for watching and we will see you in the next video.